Hey guys, um, so if you watched our live webinar that we just did a few hours ago, you <laughs> probably noticed that we were pretty unorganized and that we didn't plan the whole thing very well. Um, so we're going to kind of make some videos to go along with that, that kind of go a little more in detail. Um, and we'll be showing you how to do certain things um, on our own blog. I think that the connection was really bad because we were both trying to be on this same Squarespace site at once. Um, so hopefully these videos will kind of clarify a little more. Um, and yes, in four hours I managed to get into an arm sling. Um, just, I know that people are going to ask, I have a pinched nerve in my shoulder um, and I keep tweaking it. I'm supposed to wear the sling for a couple of weeks to like let it completely heal and I haven't been and I heard it again today so that's why I have an arm sling on it's not like something super crazy or weird just a bench nerve um, okay so I'm just gonna start with kind of the basics I'm gonna start talking about pages um, so pages in Squarespace are super easy to edit and to organize so I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of them so this video will be fairly short. Um, I will screen share with you guys here. So I am in my back end of Squarespace right now. So this is my actual website. And if you click on pages, that will open up this little menu on the side here. Um, I am using the Galapagos theme. So there are three areas of navigation. There's the main navigation, which will appear at the top here. There's a footer navigation, which I don't use, but that would appear in the footer down here below um, these. And then there's the not linked area, which is basically anything that I don't want in the navigation or in the footer, um, but I still want you guys to be able to access. So let's just start by making a new page. Um, to make a new page, you click the plus sign. And there's nine different types of pages that you can make in this particular theme. In some themes, you can make an index. Some of them, um, there's just, it kind of varies between the themes. But in this one, you have nine pages. Um, so page is just a regular page. That would be something like my about page where it's just a, it's your header and like your navigation, but there's no sidebar. Um, so it's just one long page and then the footer. Um, the products page, which I'm not sure if I have, oh, I do have it. Um, this is where you can do commerce things. So um, this particular theme shows everything kind of in like a grid. I only have one thing in here, so it's only showing that one thing, but if I had a bunch, there would be like smaller pictures down here, there'd be more here, and it shows up in like a grid setting. From the shop page, you can kind of hover over the main content. That's where you can change the settings, manage your products, add products, all that good stuff. Um, you can also get to that information by clicking the little gear icon. Okay, next is a cover page. This is one of the reasons I wanted to switch to Squarespace. Cover pages are just gorgeous and beautiful. I use them for quite a few things. One of them is my work with me page. Um, the cover page takes up the entire page like this. And there's a bunch of different layouts that you can choose from. Um, I just happen to use this one. But depending on what you want, they have different types of pages. So there's just a regular landing page, um, which is kind of what this is. They also have pages that are more like profiles, so you can add more text like what this page does, you can add text down here. Um, there's audio pages where you can add podcasts to music. If you're a musician, you can have um, stuff like that on there. There's video pages, which this premiere theme is what I used for the webinar page. Um, so that way people could watch it live on the page. And then there's a location page. So if you are an actual um, brick and mortar store and you have an actual location where you do business, one of these pages would be great for a location page. Um, so a cover page, you can't edit as much, like you can't just add whatever you want to it, but they make like really gorgeous 
landing pages um, and product pages because you can put just enough information to kind of um, entice people into going to another page by using the buttons or using a contact form. So that's kind of what a cover page is. The next page is technically not a page. It's called a folder. I use a folder. Um, oops, I don't want to do that. I use a folder for the Nora Conrad toolbox. Um, if I click on the actual toolbox, it doesn't take me to a page. It's just um, like basically a folder that holds other pages. So you can put as many pages as you want within a folder, um, but you cannot open the folder, I guess. So for example, the toolbox page, like the Nora Conrad toolbox, I have the cover page in here. I have the actual page where the content is, and then I have the try it free page. So that just kind of keeps them a little more organized. And if I wanted to add this to my actual navigation, um, it would show up as a pull down. So, oh, what is going on? So let me do this as an example. We'll make a folder. We'll just name it home. And then you can drag pages into there or you can make a new page. Um, but basically, let's get one more page in there. What would happen is that when someone hovers over it, there's a little drop down where you can get to the different pages. Um, so that's what folders are for. And they're really useful, especially if you have a lot of pages, um, just kind of organizing it and making it easier for your visitors to find what they need. Um, to delete pages while I'm deleting this, all you have to do is hover over the page that you want to delete and a little trash can will appear. You just click that, it will ask if you want to delete it. You can hit confirm. And if for some reason you accidentally deleted a page that you didn't mean to, if you go down to the bottom, there's a little area with deleted pages. To get a page back, all you would have to do is click restore. Okay, so the next page is an album. Um, I don't use this because I'm not a musician, but this is where you can upload media um, to a page. So let's just open it up so you can kind of see what I mean. You can add album art and basically it will create a playlist for you with your information and you can add your tracks right to it. So if you have podcasts, this would also be a great option um, for you, which I do not have. Next is a blog. A blog page is what my homepage is. Um, when you click on that, it expands out and basically you can add blog post by clicking this little plus up here. This is also where you can edit all of them. All you have to do is click on settings and that opens up the actual blog post where you can type, edit, you can add images, um, add your SEO, all that good stuff. And that's where you can also share it on your social media channels um, if you want to once it's published. And let's go back. Okay. So the next page is an events page. I used this page to kind of announce the webinar. Um, so as you can see, this is what it looks like. You can add as many events as you want. This is great if you are like a wedding planner or something and you want to show people the days that you cannot work or days that are already taken. And once the day has passed, there'll be a little slash through that event like that. Next is a gallery page. This basically organizes your photos. So if you wanted to make a portfolio or something like that, that's what the gallery would be for. And then the last is a link. A link is not an actual page. It's just a link to another page. So if you were linking off site, you could use that. Or you can do what I did where I linked to the toolbox page. This toolbox was in a folder down here, so I don't want to just move that up because then it won't be in this folder. Um, so I just linked to that page. And when you add a new link, it will ask you to enter the title, which is what the actual link name will show up as. And then you can add the URL. You can add an external one. You can add content from your blog, or you can also make it a file. So if you wanted to create a link for someone to get to a resource, 
that is how you would do it. All right, so that are that are <laughs> that is the types of pages that you can make. Um, I'm going to go in and show you a little bit how you can edit a page. So if you click on a regular page, all you have to do is hover over this middle content area and this will pop up. You can edit the page or just edit the settings. When you click on edit, it will edit the actual page. It makes it full screen and this is where you can start typing. If you hover under some sort of text, that's where you can add different blocks. That's what um, these options are called in Squarespace. And there are a ton of different kinds. So you can add more text, you can add images, videos, you can add um, photos. There's an area to add your own coding. So if you wanted to um, insert your own code, you can do that. They have things like menus. So if you are a restaurant, you can use that option. Um, they have all kinds of stuff in here. So really anything that you need or that you would add to a WordPress site, you can really easily add to Squarespace. Once you hit save, it takes you back to the main menu area. Settings opens up a basically a mini menu. Um, this is where you can change the actual navigation title and the page title. The page title is what will appear up here in your tab. So when people visit your page, they'll see that whatever you name that. This is also what will show up in Google when someone searches for your blog. So you want to make sure that this, if you are using keywords, you would want to use your keywords in this area here. Enabled means that this page is viewable. So if you are working on a page, you're editing it, but you don't want anyone else to be able to see it yet, you would uncheck this. It will ask you if you want to disable it, which I'm not going to. Um, but that basically makes it only accessible to you and your other administrators. Description is for SEO. So if you want to um, add some keywords or kind of give people an idea of what this page is for, this is where you would want to do that. The URL slug is where people will get to your site. So if I typed in noraconrad.com slash about, because that's what I typed in, they would get to this page. So you can edit that to whatever you want. You can create a password for the page if you want it to be password protected and add a thumbnail to the page, which again is for SEO purposes if someone Googles your page. You can set it as a home page, duplicate the page, um, and then down here, obviously, save, delete, and cancel. There's also some more advanced options, which is where you would want to insert custom code. So for example, on my toolbox page down here, um, this is where I have all of the resources for our Conrad toolbox. And this page is actually protected um, by a plugin called TinyPass. And I inserted that TinyPass um, code right in this advanced section. So this is what keeps users who are not subscribed out of the page so that way they can't see the information that you have to actually pay to view. Um, so if you want to use your own coding, that is definitely a great option. If you want to edit in your blog, um, this works a little differently. You can hit settings like I already showed you, and that's how you can edit a blog post. But you can also hover over the preview area here, and this is how you can add blog posts, manage your blog post. So I can quickly add a blog post by clicking here. Manage post. Oh, it doesn't want to load. That was weird. Um, so manage post, I think that's what opens the sidebar area. That was an odd thing. Um, and then settings is what opens your blog settings, which is the same as any other page. Um, but you can also choose how many posts are shown per page. Um, so that's a good option. If you have like really short blog posts, you would want to show more. If you have super long blog posts, you probably only want to show one or two per page. Um, again, this is all pretty much the same. You have the option to be able to post via your email and um, to save a little bookmark to get into your blog really quickly. Again, there's an area to add your own coding as well as edit your tags and categories. And syndication is where you would 
um, replace your RSS feed. And this is also, if you were doing podcasts, um, allow you to notify iTunes that you are using podcast in this area. I probably shouldn't have hit save. I don't remember if I changed anything. Um, talking about blog posts a little more, I currently have it set up so that way when someone comes to my page, they can see the entire blog post. But you can also set it up so they just see a little preview of your blog post and then they have to click on read more to read the entire thing. You would want to hit settings on whatever blog post you want to change and go into the options. You'll want to add a thumbnail image so that way um, you can access it from other parts of the site. And then right here is where you would insert the excerpt for the blog post. This is what will show in the little preview area, and then right underneath you'll be able to see a button that says read more. This is also where you can select if you want this to be a featured post or not. Featured posts you can um, select if you're making an archive or something of that nature. Um, you can list all of your featured posts instead of every single post, and we'll get into that more in a later video. Okay, so that is pretty much the basics of pages. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that you can drag and drop these super easily. You can drag and drop them within any one of these. So if I wanted my shop in the footer, I can just drag that up and then scroll down. You'll see it right here in the footer. So that is kind of pages for you guys in a, not really a nutshell. That was sort of long. Um, but yeah, that's how you make them. So I will be doing more videos like this. Um, if you're reading this in a blog post, you're just, you'll have access to all of them. But if you're not reading this in the blog post, you can look at all of these in my on my YouTube channel in a playlist, or you can go to the blog post, which I will link down below once I have that live. Other than that, that should be all for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.